Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Suba Nordic Craft. This time, for the first time, it's not a podcast, it will be a special theme video. And in this video, I would like to wrap up all my knits of last year. So all the knitting in 2023. Uh, it will be a little bit of like a plants versus reality um, check for me um, as well as you know like a little show of all the garments and accessories and everything uh, knitted that I made. Um, for the sake of keeping this video slightly shorter and maybe a little bit more interesting I will be excluding everything that's not with me uh, anymore, uh, aka gifts or commissions that I made last year. There wasn't many of them, but uh, yeah, some Christmas gift happened, as you know, perhaps from the last episode. I also throughout the year made some commissions and some other gifts for friends and family, so I will be excluding that. So this will purely remain stuff that I can really show you and that I can, yeah, describe better like that. Um, I will be perhaps dividing this video into three parts. Um, first will be my Make 9 of 2023. I will show you what I planned and I will talk about how it ended. Second will be a section that I called my other Make 9, okay, Make 18th. <laughs> um, these are other projects that I had planned from the beginning of the year, but they weren't like... My first Make 9 was really traditional nine patterns that I wanted to make. The second Make 9 um, were like a themes or areas that I wanted to participate in. So for example, at MCAL or a test knit, etc. But again, I had like nine different things that I wanted to make out of this. And then the third section will be about everything else that I needed that wasn't planned or wasn't part of any of these like planning tools, etc. Which is exclusively socks i believe so yeah we'll start with uh, the traditional make nine before we do that though hi <laughs> my name is bara i completely forgot to tell you so if you're new here, hello. If you're a returning viewer, hello again. Very lovely to see you all. My name is Bara. I live in Czech Republic in a small flat uh, with my boyfriend and our dog, Princess Servilla. We live in Brno, that's the second largest city uh, of our small country. And yeah, I do a lot of knitting. I do crochet, I do sewing, I do cosplay, and I love learning new crafts. So I typically pod, uh, record podcast episodes on a monthly basis, but this time I decided to do something a little bit different and I'm doing like an in-betweener or like a special episode that I said at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, hi. <laughs> and now let's do uh, the first section, aka make nine. I made at the beginning of the year, <laughs> I made these like little trackers, let's say. Um, that are pictures of the project that I planned and every single one of them has like a bar where I mark the progress. So if the bar is colored, you can tell that I finished the garment. If it didn't, if it's not, if it's halfway, it's either in progress or it's not started at all. So let's take a look at my uh, first Make 9. Everything is in sparkly uh, colors, yeah, so it can <laughs> glitter a little bit. What do you say? I'd say three finished objects out of nine and one in progress. Not that great, not that great, but I'm still happy about at least these three. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to take my uh, tablets to read a little bit about the patterns as well. Um, I would like to start by telling you what I didn't make and then we will take a look at the things that I finished or I have in progress. So first thing that I didn't make, is bookish cardi. I will try to post at least like pictures of that here. It's a cardigan that I really like in terms of it looks really cozy, it looks quite versatile. I wear skirts a lot. It's short, so I think it will it will 
fit me very well. Um, the pattern is by uh, Boho Boho Chic Fiber Co. Um, I am actually postponing this pattern to this year, so I still want to make it, even though I didn't um, manage last year, it's still on my to-do list, so the reason why I didn't make it is simply priorities, I believe, I just didn't get to make it, but now I have I have the yarn already, so it's happening this year, it is. Second pattern that I didn't make, and it's the same case, it's Unbearable Hoodie, that's a design by Maxim Sir. Sir, Sir, aka uh, Maxim the Knitter, Max the Knitter, or Le Garçon, which is a designer duo from Canada. Um, I literally have this pattern on my to knit list from the day one I started knitting. Like, I could almost tell that I started knitting so I can one day make this. The reason I didn't get to do it is that I'm still unsure about the colors, but I absolutely need to make it. So again, it's getting postponed to this year. So what I will be recording next, well, two make 9, 2024, you'll perhaps see some things that I'm talking about today. Sorry, but yeah, I still am committed to make this. So I'm just, you know, postponing it. It will happen. Um, so there's the second thing. Third one is a cardigan, a long cardigan called Possibility of Crows. It's by this yarning. Um, they are a designer who I believe doesn't sell on Ravelry, but they have very unique designs. This is a long cardigan that my boyfriend picked as something that he wants me to knit him. The reason why it didn't happen and this is something that I'm not even sure if I will be able to knit it this year is that my boyfriend is super sensitive to wool <laughs> so the only wool that he's currently able to wear is Malabrigo this cardigan is I believe from worsted or like more thicker yarn so in order for me to knit it at the length he wants it and he's one 86 centimeters tall I believe is very thin but still you know you can imagine that the length will be big so the yarn usage yarn consumption huge aka I think this will be a big financial investment this year we just didn't have the funds basically to make it happen but yeah um, as long as we'll somehow manage uh, this will get back to my on my to-do list and i'll make it for him the one thing that i want to say is that the original design has like this crow skull and other ornaments on it i want to change it my boyfriend is a big fan of genshin impact um it's like a anime world of warcraft basically you have a free world where you can you know just exist and play and it's cute and it's like anime and there are very nice characters very popular amongst cosplayers etc and he there is this character um uh, arataki ito that's an oni so like a little demon so he wants me to um knit a demon mask instead of that original design and the thing is that i already had that I uh, already designed that knitting pattern of the Oni mask, so that took me a long while. So I'm doing this one day <laughs> for sure. I didn't do that for nothing, but yeah, right now uh, I think we don't have, uh, I think, enough motivation to just invest in this garment so much and make it, but it will happen. Okay, moving on. Uh, next thing. Yeah, I have five things that didn't happen, one in progress, three made. So the fourth that is just not started is the Woodlark Shawl. The Woodlark Shawl is by Fiber Tails. It's a beautiful shawl that I want to make as part of my cosplay for Anna from Frozen, Princess Anna. I find it very beautiful. I think that if I make it in like purple, yellow, brown combination, it will be absolutely stunning. So I still want to make it, but 
Her cosplay is not very high on my to-do list either, so perhaps not this year, but later on, definitely. I think I will be able to, you know, wear it mm. even normally, so I'll definitely, uh, definitely uh, make this one one day. And last thing, last item that I didn't start it, and the only one that I'm actually cancelling, kind of, is a Stria Cardigan. It's by Andrea Mori. Um, the pattern and the design is beautiful. I still like it and I still can imagine wearing it. But the thing that stopped me basically was that whenever I started to think about what colors do I want to use, how do I want to knit it, I just got completely stuck. I have no idea. I just don't know. I, I I don't know. I wanted to make it somehow a stash busting project. So I was thinking maybe I'll that that uh, that uh, little stripes that are there. Maybe I'll do each in a different color so I can use up my um, leftovers of any kind of sock yarn. But then I wasn't sure what the main color should be. I didn't want to make it too colorful. I still wanted to make it like one solid color plus the little stripes and I was just moving in circles until I decided that I I'm perhaps not figuring this out at all so this is the one thing that's going really I don't know getting postponed to a longer period of time because I simply don't don't know what to do <laughs> maybe I'll figure out maybe one day I will wake up and I will know it can happen so yeah, these are the five things that didn't happen this year. Moving on to uh, the one work in progress. And I have it with here, uh, with me here. That would be the Ravenclaw sweater from Bad Wolf Girls and Knits, AKA Megan Regan. She's a designer who made um, like house sweaters for every single house in Hogwarts. So, yeah, this is already happening. This is the state of the sweater. I think I was showing this to you maybe in October. I cast it is on. I have no idea. Maybe in May, maybe even sooner. And I, uh, you know, I was just uh, every time I took it, I made a few rows. Then I didn't uh, touch it for a month, etc., etc. Until I think the last time I was working on this was in October. And I was traveling to Prague and back, so I took it in the train and I made quite some decent progress. But yeah, I have still the body and the sleeves to make. And uh, that will happen, of course. That's my work in progress, so I'm, I'm finishing it. I'm using um, a special yarn. It's by Atik Yarn. That's a Czech dyer. And uh, she's... Uh, launched this Witcher collection and this yarn with Stellina so it's cool it has like this um, silver threads there and um, this one is called Geralt this one is called Vernon so it's inspired by character from the Witcher and I'm making a Harry Potter inspired uh, sweater out of it that's uh, yeah I call it heresy um, every time I speak about it, so you heard that joke before, perhaps. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's uh, getting somewhere. Um, maybe I should say at this point that I have a lot of works in progress now, because uh, for those who follow me, you know that I went on a very big cast on streak or whatever. <laughs> So I was just uh, starting new projects and finishing some as well, but not as quickly as I was starting them. So currently I have maybe 10 plus projects in progress, which doesn't feel that well because I knit a lot, but it still doesn't feel that I make a lot of progress because I tend to change the projects. So my current short term goal is to decrease that number. Um, what I found really works for me is having two pairs of socks in progress. Usually I have one really vanilla, like a traveling project and one more elaborate. Two garments, tops, sweaters, etc. 
which at this point I currently have two pairs of socks and two pairs of um, two sweaters, well, a top and a sweater, and then one shawl. In terms of shawls, I think I have about five. So my current goal is to finish a lot of these shawls, to have just one, and then I will focus more on all these projects that I have. So even this sweater will uh, be addressed very soon. Um, yeah. So that would be my only thing that is currently in progress from this list. And now moving on to the finished objects. First one, from the beginning of the year, I think I finished this in February, I made it very quickly, is this sweater. It's the Moorland cardigan, Moorland cardigan. It's by Tanya Barley. And it's the, my very first cardigan, my very first uh, sticked project, my very first uh, karaklan as well. And uh, my very first uh, thing made out of unspun yarn, because this is made out of Nutiden held double. So, why I love this uh, pattern so much are the sleeves, the sleeve detail. Basically, they have this beautiful, like, um, natural plant-like um, detail with leaves. And I just fell in love with it, so I made it. Let me show you the second sleeve too, because it has my special touch. It has this little um, embroidery on it. And um, yeah, it's knitted top down in circle. So you start by knitting. Let me check. Yeah, you start by knitting this uh, stockinette. Then you, um, am I right? I'm not, I'm not right. I think I am. Then you, then you knit, um, you know, the raglan, you knit the body, you knit the sleeve. Then you, um, I'm sorry, I just got stuck. Yeah, uh, as soon as you're finished with this, you do the stick. And only after that, I made the uh, ribbing on the neckline and the button band, and that was it. The sticking for me was an adrenaline experience, but a pleasant one. Of course, I was nervous, but I used the method to secure it with machine sewn seam. I'm pretty used to sew. I wouldn't say that I'm a super skilled sewist, but I need, I know how to handle a sewing machine. So I just, uh, I think I ran through it maybe two or three times just to make sure that it's super secured. And then I just cut it and it worked very well. Um, the yarn didn't really even start to unravel much, maybe one um, stitch but it held pretty fine and when it comes to knitting this unspun I was surprised how addictive it was it I I just couldn't take it down because I, that's why I made this so quickly I think I made this in one month or one, one month and a half which as I mentioned I do a lot of things at once so it's a very short time I was knitting almost exclusively on this at the time I just loved it so much Maybe in the sleeve, with the sleeves I got a bit um, slower because I just needed to focus better and you need a hook to create this special effect. So it was more um, like demanding, maybe mentally. <laughs> uh, so uh, this was uh, slightly slower, but the stocking at here, that was like a dream, a dream. And um, the yarn is responsible and the pattern as well. So I really, really am happy with this first knit of last year. Next thing that I made was, let me see, No Place Like Gnome. Another very successful pattern that I made, that I used to make a sweater, I didn't make a pattern, sorry. No Place Like Gnomes by Martina Maškova. Czech designer, this is just joy in sweater. Impossible to take it down again because of the very fun color work. So there's 
um, maybe let me see two rows maybe two rows that's uh, with uh, that's work with three colors other than that these are very easy uh, motifs to make not very uh, long uh, like um, chunks of colors so a little bit of uh, catch floating <laughs> float catching as well but other than that it was again very quick knit because it was so entertaining uh, you know you just need to finish the gnome and then you need to finish the fence and then you need to finish the strawberries etc etc and then it's time to separate for sleeves and you just finish the body um yeah i made some modifications on the sleeves uh the first the original pattern is decreasing the sleeve and they, there is no color work at the end i made them um straight i didn't do any decreases and at the end i make I made a little color work again from the from the pattern and then I decreased the sleeves fairly quickly here to make like balloon sleeves. If I would do it today I would decrease it even more because they are still a little bit loose but amazing. I used hmm, Jameson and Smith jumper two ply jumper four ply yarn I will put it here because I don't remember the exact name but it's a 25 grams small skeins of yarn that's perfect for color work recommended very much I completely second that opinion it's very very nice to work with it's a little bit toothy so it really catches the stitches kind of stick together so even if you need to unravel something if you need to frog something they are still very cooperative the yarn really wants to be knitted into color work and um, it just made the experience even more pleasant for me so i really love this main color it's not a plain green it has a lot of like yellow and brown and or orange like fibers in it so it's super um entertaining as well and yeah i do apologize for the light it's impossible to record in a normal daylight in my apartment so i do have artificial light it's a little bit yellowish unfortunately there's nothing i can do about it i don't have the equipment to make it better yet and i just want to podcast or to record something so sorry for that but yeah i think that the colors are fairly okay even under this light and um, the second favorite color that I really loved was this like very like rusty green. Again, a combination of more shades of fibers into one color and it made it super nice to work with as well. So yeah, the only thing that I might, I would like to say, and I already said this when I was talking about this as finished object, is that maybe because of the sleeves that I kept, you know, straight, I used more uh, than uh, called for and that would be maybe buy more than one skein of yarn. I had bigger yarn usage but again that could be very well um, caused by the alteration of the pattern that I made. So yeah second finished object finished about in July or August I believe. <coughs> It was nice. I'll perhaps have to drink something. I was perhaps speaking way too quickly. <laughs> I'm so excited about all this. Okay, let's move on to the last finished object of this first section. <laughs> you all know, right? Yeah, it's Nivalis. Nivalis pullover by Tati Lutsak. A pattern that I originally wanted to make at the end of 2022 because it was a knit along with Gornina Sestri. I struggled with my tension, with the size and with a lot of it. That's why I believe I frogged it twice, maybe from this point. And the third time was magic, so it happened. I used 
Devonia from John Arbon Textiles um, as yarn. The yarn usage was pretty much as expected. I did make a few alterations as well. Um, and that would be the color work here on the bottom and on the sleeves. There is nothing in the original pattern, as well as um, here on the top, this um, whole color work is done differently in the pattern. It's not ferrile, it's... Oh, now I have no idea how the method is called, but basically instead of knitting this contrast color, you you hold it double and you just guide it up and down um, to create the same pattern. So for example here we have three stitches in the contrast color so instead of um, knitting it knitting them in this yellow you would hold the yellow in front of your work knit three stitches with the green one and then you would um, move it back behind and by changing this direction you would create the very same uh, pattern it just ha will have a slightly different effect because you will see you know the lines of the yarn instead of the stitches i tried this method i had issues with my tension you know caused by just a complete inexperience I, and i chose not to um, carry on with it because i just wanted to enjoy this knit slightly more <laughs> and have it more relaxed so this is the first, uh, that's another alteration. And the last one is that I believe that the neckline, and I don't remember this very well uh, anymore. I think that the neckline doesn't have the standard reading that it just starts with the stock in it right away. So it rolls a little bit. I had issues with that as well. It just kept rolling. It just kept, you know, disappearing. So it felt like I don't need anything. So I decided to do the standard ribbing instead. And it works fine as well. So yeah. That's my very last finished object from the traditional, original Make 9 that I have. Moving on to the other Make 9, aka this list. As you can tell, slightly more successful. There is a much more of the thread color that marks my progress. To sum it up, five things finished, two things in progress. I do have them here ready. Sorry, I was just checking whether my pile is complete. It is. And two things that I didn't start. Much better, I would say. So let's again start from the by the with the doom and gloom and then let's go up you know. um so the two things that i didn't start were one commission that uh is from my friend and you know this the commission being here means that we agreed on it in 2022 now we are more than a year after and it's still not started uh, the reason is that uh, we were in touch with a friend a lot and she took her time to just pick the right colors and the yarn and she chose beautifully and um, when she did that it was around summertime um, this particular yarn was not in stock in those quantities needed because this shawl is huge so I need at least 500 grams which means you know, if you're talking about 50 gram skins, which is quite standard, it's 10 skins or five 100 gram skins. So it's quite hard to find that uh, quantity. So I was waiting basically until a, two or three weeks ago when I saw by a very lucky coincidence that my favorite yarn shop, Lunia Sestri, just had them. So I purchased that. That means that this will happen this year, it's a commission, it will get prioritized, I will perhaps start working on, working on it even like this or next month. And yeah, it will happen. The next thing that I have here is a Wood Spirit sweater. And let me take a look who's the designer. Katerina Sirico. 
um, beautiful design with quite a specific shape. I wanted to make this stitch busting uh, project and make it from um, my nudie den that I have. Uh, I didn't get to knit it um, there because like at, during the year I was a little bit unsure about how it will fit me because the most beautiful um, photos of that project that I saw and where, where I really fell in love with the shape and with how it basically looks like was on very um, like thin ladies. <laughs> And that's not my body type, so then I was a little bit unsure whether it will meet my expectations in terms of how it will look on me. Um, and I was postponing it a little bit. I think I will still get to this because it's a really beautiful design. I just didn't make any specific plans on when to. That means perhaps not this year. So these were the two things that didn't um, happen. And it also gives you the idea a little bit on how I planned my other make nine. Um, the two works in progress that I currently have are knit along with wool point, um, check uh, store, yarn store again, that hosts a year long knit along every single year. They host a year long knit along with a certain designer. So you have full year to make a garment uh, designed by the particular person, ideally from their yarn, and then you can also join their giveaways and some, you know, yarn gallery or project gallery, etc. So I picked a project during summer, I believe. I bought the yarn, I started knitting it in fall, and then I just didn't finish it. So obviously I didn't meet the criteria to join the gallery. But I still want to finish it. It's Navelli Top by Caitlin Hunter. Let me double check if I'm not telling you nonsense. Navelli Sweater by Caitlin Hunter, correct. <laughs> and um, it's like a almost sleeveless top that's worked bottom up with a beautiful color work. The original design had three colors. I decided to make a few alterations. Well, not very much, but I basically replaced two of these colors by one. So this is how it looks like. I already have the full color work done and I'm now working on the body. The way how it works, as I said, it's knitted bottom up. So at some point, instead of knitting in round, you start knitting um, in row and you knit just the front, you knit just the back, then on shoulders that would create, you know, your um, armholes. You knit it until the point that it's like um, long enough for you. You connect it on the shoulders and then you also knit um, around the armholes. So that's what is happening now. I just separated those two sides and I'm knitting one of the halves. Um, yeah, when I will finish it. Easy, easy. I'll talk about it a little bit more in my podcast episode uh, when I will be working on this. But yeah, yarn. Sorry, I should at least mention the yarn. So the contrast color is uh, spin cycle yarn. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I will post maybe the, the full name of the base. It's the sport weight dyed in wool is the name, I believe. Anyways, contrast color and main color is Malabrigo Sock. It is beautiful aubergine. White outside of my usual color preferences, but I really like it and I think I will wear it a lot. The second work in progress. Second work in progress, you're gonna laugh, was MCO uh, from Steven West, aka West Knits, that I joined for the first time in 2022, so I decided I want to incorporate it in my plans for 2023. I did start it, um, things happened, as you perhaps know if you were watching a little bit what's going on in the knitting world. So 
Let me show you the current state of this particular work in progress. Knitted work in progress, I should say. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, as everyone else, almost, I think, I decided to make the right call and um, frog it. So, basically, I was about one and a half glue in and then uh, I kept reading about what's going on. My particular color combination didn't really evoke the hate symbol <laughs> as much, or I didn't see it at all, but yeah. So at first I was hesitant, but then I still didn't feel good about the working on that and I also think it was the right choice to respect the designer who was very clear in his approach to this by changing uh, you know the clue one completely by asking people to not post the original uh, clue one in case they choose to keep it and he was really calling out uh, and asking people to consider changing it and apologizing I think he handled the situation very well although it was kind of funny that it really happened in the first place but yeah after uh, thinking about it uh, a bit more I decided to do the same thing so I will do basically a big uh, grandma granny square <laughs> um, I think I saw quite a lot of patterns that were doing granny squares as well but I think they were using like the yarn double and they were using bigger hooks because they are granny squares or the you know, stitches were huge compared to mine. So I will have this one like small, delicate, <clears throat> my apologies, like a delicate one. Uh, yeah, obviously I just started, just, you know, it happened in one evening, I just sat down, frogged the entire thing and restarted it. So <laughs> the current state looks like this, ton of small <laughs> balls, and these are the obviously the leftovers that I didn't use yet. So yeah, that's the second work in progress. I'm not exactly excited about clue one and two, but I really love the effects of the third and third, fourth one. I think that's where the, you know, where Steven just showed us something new again. So I really want to make it. And I think I will use it a lot because the colors are Again, picked from one of my favorite fandoms, inspired by one character that I can show you as well, from Honkai Star Rail game. So I do have like some emotional connection to this and I really want to wear it eventually. So yeah, this is, hap this is still happening. And now, moving on to my finished objects. Since it was, this was a little bit more practicalist, two of them are no longer here. And these were two commissions. The Marilena top, which was like a very, like a net-like top um, that I made for a friend. It was a commission. I wasn't particularly happy with this pattern. It was bought on Etsy from, uh, I didn't find it there anymore when I was checking for the last time. So I cannot even refer to anything now, but it was practically just two rectangles that were supposed to be sewn together in a certain way so you get the sleeves etc but the instructions were very very vague i would say um, the pattern was called um like size there were two sizes i think one was like s to m and the other one was l to xl I had to pivot and make it even bigger to make it like fit um, my friend, uh, even though I believe she would, she should fit in the bigger sizes out of the two, but it just, there wasn't any way how this will happen. And, uh, you know, the instructions were just, I don't know, quite vague. So I would expect maybe that from a free pattern, not from the paid pattern that was um i think money wise it was very similar to like sweater pattern on ravelry that includes pages of instructions options tutorials and everything and this was just one page maybe 
eight lines of instructions and yarn recommendations, that was it. So slightly disappointing, but yeah, I made it, finished it. The finished garment fits my friend, she's super happy about it, so that's fine. The second thing that uh, was a commission were long socks for the same friend. These ended up very well, so I will try to put a picture here. And it was a stash busting project from all the leftovers. So I was just taking um, all the colors that I had. She just told me, you know, use all the colors. And no, ex no exclusions, no exceptions. So I did. And they are, they ended up being beautiful. So yeah, that's the second thing. And now for the three remaining that I have here that were from, for me, from me to me. Um, yeah. Starting with the test knit of Bracken Sweater, again by Tanya Barley, she's my favorite designer. And this is how it looks like. To be completely honest, I don't think this sweater was released. I was um, looking for it, um, of course, after we test knit it, after the deadline. There were some issues with some sizes where people weren't really getting this result that they wanted with the increases. So I think we were, we, I believe, if I remember correctly, that we were going a little bit back and forth during the test knitting. But my sample ended up really well. Love it. Wear it. Um, it's just a beautiful sweater. So yeah, I'm, I just don't think that it was released. Um, but. I'm not 100% sure because I took a little knitting break during this year and I didn't even check the social media at the time. So maybe something happened by then. I used two strands of yarn. One was again noted in. So this green color you saw in my um, Moorland cardigan, that's the same one. And then I had this like beautiful rusty brown color um, as a main color. And I held the double, sorry, I held one strand of Nutiden with one strand of mohair. I used Ito Sensei, again in a matching colorway. First time working with mohair, loved it very much. Um, the result, yeah, Nutiden has, you know, a special feeling. I consider, I personally don't mind it being a little bit toothy and rustic. I can handle it. Of course, I feel it on my skin, but it's not unpleasant. I think the mohair helped a little bit with that as well. So yeah, but it's super warm. It's very warm. And I'm a big fan of this uh, corrugated ribbing on the neckline. Same is here on the sleeves and on the bottom. And the color work is very simple. And I think if I remember correctly, but I was testing it in April or May, so it's a long time ago. But if I remember correctly, all the dec all the increases happened here. It was knitted top down, and then when you started working on the color work, it there were no increases anymore. So it was very easy actually and very enjoyable. Yeah. So that's the first um, finished object. Second is my, um, yeah, let's go chronologically. Second is my Aurora <laughs> Cabin Shawl by Stephen Best. Vernina um, Sestri, um, local yarn shop, made a knit along with Stephen Best to celebrate the, their 10th birthday. It was a several month long knit along, so I decided to make this pattern. I really really loved it. Um, I picked, I wanted to pick some really fall moody colors, which I did. Um, funny story that you might have heard already is that when I was buying and picking colors for this, for whatever reason, I only, I thought it only has four colors. So I bought um, this, this red, yellow, brown and the gray. And then <laughs> I was knitting in it, knitting it, and got to yeah around this point where you join color E, and I was like, hmm, what do you mean color E? <laughs> e is a fifth 
letter of the alphabet, right? I only have four. So yeah, I rushed to the store to buy the third one, uh, the fifth one, and I picked this green color and I ended up, let me show you a section where there is more of it here. I ended up really happy picking this because it kind of breaks that pattern of like, you know, that really obvious um, fall warm colors and the gray. It has, it is a nice like highlight or pop and I received so many compliments about this. Maybe most of all my projects, every time I wear it in any kind of knitting community, people are really complimenting <laughs> that color choice, which is fun because it's a completely, you know, <laughs> afterthought. But yeah, I even uh, was told that uh, some people consider making it, uh, seeing this uh, color combination that they, they really kind of convinces them to make this shawl. I had a blast knitting it. It has, it like, there are some really easy sections like these stripes combined with these sections, which is basically slip stitches with a little bit of cable work. And other than that, it's knit pro. So it's actually very easy. Every once in a while, there is a row that needs a little bit more focus, but yeah. The size is huge and the end where you have this like zigzag, it's more than 1000 stitches a row. So rather than, you know, being it demanding on a skill level, it really requires commitment for your time and patience. And the I-cord bind off, is like the best example of what you need so um yeah i personally i was working on that then i put it down focused on other things and then perhaps like three weeks before the deadline which was the international day of knitting in public um i realized that i have maybe two thirds of it to be done so i really was on schedule and every day i made maybe four rows by the end of the shawl, <laughs> wow, it took me hours to make four rows. So, yeah, but I'm really happy about how it ended. I used uh, Life in the Long Grass Merino Singles. Yeah. So, yeah. Second, and moving on to the last finished object that was also like a stash busting one, and that's my Ranonculus number two. Whee! Oh, wow, <laughs> it looks really weird. It looks weirder and weirder. weirder. When I made my first run on clothes, my issue was that I have very, I had a very tight neckline and I didn't want that. I really liked, you know, those pictures where um, the uh, models had like one shoulder, you know, outside of it and I wanted something similar. So when I made the second section, I started with more stitches than called for. I think it starts with 60, I started with maybe 90 even. So um, the result, phone. So I had to take a phone call um, that took longer than expected. So I'm not sure what I told you so far, but yeah, Ranon Kulus um, made from uh, La Bianeme uh, single, Merino singles, uh, colorway air guitar, very specific mixture of gray and light neon colors uh, that um, makes this nice kind of like crazy <laughs> pattern. I didn't alter skeins, I wanted to um, you know let the yarn decide what it wants to do, which I think ended up fairly well. And uh, yeah, the neckline is bigger than expected, but I still wear it uh, on dress um, or sleeveless tops and it uh, makes me happy. So yeah, Ranon Kulos by Midori Hirose. This, this concludes the second half uh, of my planned patterns, I believe. Yeah, it does. And we'll move on 
right away to the last section, which are patterns that I made that I didn't plan in this original set. And these are socks. So I made more, but as I said, uh, these are no longer with me. There are some gifts like the West for my mom that I made the last month or socks for friends and shawl, I believe. One shawl I also made. Yeah. Anyways, this is the little pile of socks that I'm going to show you. I will run through it very quickly. Um, I... First of all, <laughs> these are all socks that I wear or my boyfriend wears, so they look like being worn. They're, I believe, apart from one pair that I just took out, <laughs> took off my shoes, they're all washed, so don't worry. But um, yeah, they are very well loved and it shows. So I will start with two pairs that are of my socks that are from uh, that are the pattern uh, Basic Sock the Rock by Petra Machová Kouřilová. This is the first one. This is very basic pattern starting from the ribbing, from the leg ribbing, stockinette, then this um, slip stitch heel, uh, heel turn, and you carry on until the um, toes. So top down vanilla sock pattern. This is leftover pair, basically Arveta um, signature four ply by West Yorkshire Spinners in the colorway Kingfisher, and this is a leftover of Priyatka Hvidyuti sock from one of the Harry Potter mm, sock knit club. So, one pair, very first pattern, second pair is here. This is the one that I was just wearing, yeah, so I'll show you just very briefly. What's interesting is that this has a very different shape, even though the stitch count is the same, the needles wear the same, different yarn. I think this is Eliza. Eliza? Yeah. Self-striping yarn. So, yeah, another basic sock that another pair of mine. Moving on to other designs and I'm going to have to put some of the names here because I don't remember the um, designers anymore but let's start by these socks these are called branches socks and it's a pattern from the 52 weeks of socks <laughs> number one I think it's pattern number three or something like that um, I'm still, you know, I still want to make all of the patterns one day. I made, this is, well, I'm, I started from the number one. This is number three. I also started number four, but I, sorry, two, but I didn't like it. So I frogged it, but yeah, at least I started, right? So I still ticked it as done. But yeah, they're quite long. They have this beautiful, beautiful, like, um, yeah, basically cabled or yeah, lace section, yeah, and it carries on until the toes. It's knitted uh, top down. What's quite interesting about this pattern is that it doesn't have any ribbing at the beginning, so it's just washed, so it's not very stretched. But basically from the start, you work on the on the pattern already but it fits very well uh, the yarn that i used is again priyatka heavy duty sock from harry potter and i think this colorway is called testral so yeah one colored socks and the rest what i have here are all best knits year of socks patterns Starting with the pattern zero, let's say, this was the free pattern that came with this whole set. So the West Knits Year of Socks 2023 was a pattern subscription where you get a sock pattern every month.
for 12 months of the year plus one additional pattern for free and you had you received this pattern right at the beginning this is the one uh, it was by Stephen Best and I loved most of the patterns very much I think I will try to make them all because they are very fun and colorful and a lot of them are very good stage busting yarn uh, patterns which is also why I decided to purchase it uh, last year because I was kind of torn. I have already a lot of sock patterns especially thanks to the book 52 weeks um, but yeah these are really good to use up all your yarn um, so yeah for instance this one had a, a main color it had six I believe one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six contrast colors. So it was really good to, um, yeah, use up the leftovers a little bit. They're huge. <laughs> I picked a size that I estimated would be good for me, but they are really big. They have, they are again top down, and they have this double um, ribbing. So you basically knit a very long ribbing and then you knit the two ends together and then you continue so when i i remember being really shocked when i started knitting this sock i uh, cast it on i made the first uh, row of the two by two ribbing and then i was reading the pattern and it says something like repeat 52 times or 56 times i was like you're joking right because usually when, when i do my socks yeah, i make 15 rows 20 marks and this called for 50 plus i didn't get it so i triple checked it wasn't a joke and then when i kept reading read your patterns ahead when i kept reading um it made sense so it's double ribbing then you knit um in this particular pattern that i'm not going to reveal uh, the heel is very simple it's a garter stitch heel You'll turn and you carry on so nice socks good for stage busting next ones were for my boyfriend same collection these are january socks pattern um i had to alter the skeins but they are for two skeins one is the main color which you use to make the ribbing the toes the heel again garter stitch and the contrast color is here to make these little stripes and you have these like cables above so i started you knitting it using my arveta and this is the crazy uh, silver ball and when i um, knitted the first one i realized i won't have enough of this color one so i switched the colors for the second one so here the major color is the silver ball and the contrast one is the uh, solid Arveta. They are big because they are for my boyfriend and they fit well. And the last um, one, that's also from this collection. And I think this is like pattern number seven or eight. So I skipped some. Are these Raising Dawn socks? I believe this is the only one colored pattern and in the collection and it has this um, beautiful almost woven like texture um, created with slip stitches and I used mountain fibers um, yarn it was a sock set there was 100 gram a skin of this one plus a 20 gram skin of like a lilac color which i didn't use i have it with my minis so yeah this is the another pair of socks for myself and that concludes my 2023 knitting it's a big pile of things that i'm happy about um motivates me to keep going for it next year so the plan is to obviously finish some of the works in progress 
and I already have my Make 9 in 2024. For those who follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it, maybe even weeks ago, two weeks ago maybe? Um, so yeah, I'm going to record one more impromptu episode to talk about my plans. Um, I will only have Make 9. I'm pretty sure Adai will keep knitting on other things as well, like socks. I don't put them in my plans, I focus on bigger things only, so my Make 9 consists of sweaters, shorts, let me check, let me take a really quick look whether there's anything else. Up. Um, <laughs> there is one shawl, three cardigans, yeah and five sweaters that's a teaser for our next episode so yeah thank you very much for being here with me today um let me know how your knitting went last year did you manage to knit everything that you planned or did you make more even or did you end up somehow like me knitting on other stuff or did you even have any plans or do you just go with whatever you want to do and don't plan at all let me know i'm really keen to hear about that so yeah thanks a lot for joining me today and i will see you most likely on my next monthly podcast episode enjoy your the start of the year and see you soon bye bye